It's Ryan Share here with PCDJ Dex3. In this video demonstration, uh, we want to demo the Learn feature, which is a unique feature uh, in Dex3. It was present in Dex2. Uh, it's been improved quite a bit in Dex3. Uh, what the Learn function allows you to do is map any button, slider, knob, anything you see on the GUI, the, the graphical user interface of Dex3, to any keyboard command or any keyboard uh, key for that matter and uh, any controller um, with DJ controllers that we have natively mapped uh, that's zero configuration all that means is the controller is plug and play if it's on the list of supported controllers you just plug in your controller before you open up our uh, Dex3 uh, make sure it's on it's powered on then fire up Dex3 it will automatically find the controller and just work the only thing you have to configure uh, as the audio outputs. Now, if it's a controller we do not support, same thing. You want to make sure it's powered on, plugged in, fire up Dex3. It should be ready to listen uh, for learn. And learn, uh, and we're going to use, um, this is the default 2 deck skin uh, video mode. I can switch it to audio mode real quick because maybe that's a little more simplified for the purpose of this video. Uh, but you'll find the learn button on all skins up in the top right hand corner here next to options or sandwiched in between options and record uh, as well as your minimize and exit buttons if you click learn what you're immediately gonna see are these blue lines around all the different button sliders knobs faders uh, in Dex 3 if I want to map a particular function or button to a keyboard command all you got to do is this. For instance, let's work on deck A here and click play. If you click the play button, what you're going to see is instead of a blue line around it, it will have a nice little red line around it. That means or indicates rather that it's listening for your keyboard shortcut. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and click my R key. So my R key has now been mapped, and you can tell if you mouse over the button, you'll get this uh, pop-up menu that tells you while you're in learn mode what button's been mapped. You'll see it'll say shortcuts, as you see right there, and it says R, because I just mapped it to R. Now, I can exit learn right now, and, and play button will be mapped, but you can map multiple buttons, so we'll go ahead and map Q to E. So now you'll see it has shortcut E applied to it. So play is R, Q is Z. If we want to do the break effect, we'll click the break button, and we'll make that W on my keyboard. As you can see, it's been mapped to W. So that's it. And if I click learn again to exit learn, R will play. Let's go ahead and turn this down a little bit. R will play. E equals Q. If I'm playing and I hit W, it'll engage the break effect. So with, with sliders, uh, it's a little bit different um, because obviously there's two commands for a slider, left or right. So the first thing you'll do when you click the slider is click the button you want to assign to the movement left, to, to left. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and click Z. You'll see shortcut Z. And then I'm going to click X. So you see shortcut Z and X have been applied to the fader. So if I exit learn, Z will move the fader left. X will move the fader right. And that, that same function or uh, the way you would apply it works for your pitch faders, volume sliders, everything uh, regarding that. And knobs are done much in the same way. Click the knob you want to map. Click the first key, C, and then we'll click V, we'll C. So click Learn again, and you'll see, I don't know if you can see that very well, but C and V are now moving the knob. V moves it right, C moves it left. So always when you're doing Learn on no uh, button, or sorry, knobs and faders, uh, try to remember that the first key that you hit is always going to be the movement to the left like you're reading left to right and then the second key you hit will always move that button or sorry knob or fader to the right 
So the same thing works for controllers, but instead of obviously clicking learn, clicking the button, and then clicking a keyboard shortcut, one of the, the keys on the keyboard that you want to map it to, you would click the function on the controller that you want to map it to. So if it's a play button, obviously you would then click the play button on the controller, and Q, you would click the Q button. So you would map all the functions, obviously, to the functions on screen that make the most sense. And for, for uh, faders, it's the same way. If I wanted to map a fader, when I first click the fader that I want to map on screen, my first movement on the controller, if it's an up and down fader, should be down and then up. If it's the cross fader, you want to move the fader on the controller left and then right. And then when I click learn, it will remember those features. And you only have to do it that once. Uh, those learn commands are, are, are kept. So every time you plug in that controller again and you open up the software, it will recognize it and remember your learn commands. Uh, and the same as can be said for the keyboard. So that's kind of a unique, easy, very easy way to map controllers. Um, some functions on controllers, like jog wheels, especially if they're motorized platters, uh, we have to map ourselves. All those, uh, all controllers aren't created equal, and some will send more points of, res you know, higher resolution, let's say, more points of da data per revolution than other controllers. Uh, therefore, it's always best that we map those. Um, but all the basic functions, play, pause, cue, loop, all those, uh, the normal functions, even applying effects, I mean, you've got effects built in. Uh, to DEX3, of course, and you can map those using Learn uh, to functions on a controller. So hopefully that helps, and keep checking back for more videos. Thanks.